Welcome to Sweetheart Survivals. I'm Charla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo. It's the two to six player game. Mm -hmm. Good for ages eight and up. Yep. It takes about 30 minutes yeah. and it's polished by Yellow Games. Yeah. And somewhere up here will be links to our overview and our full playthrough. Yes. And uh, we have King of Tokyo as well as the Power Up expansion number one. There we go. That's better. Uh, and also... The Collector Pack number one, which is basically the second expansion, Halloween. Right. Nice. So, we're reviewing it all. Yeah, it's one shot. Yeah, just all of it. So, what do you think of the components of King of Tokyo? I like the components. The figures themselves are really thick cardboard yeah. punch outs, which they're good and durable. Yeah. And they come in these nice, or they come with these nice plastic stands that you just put them on. Yeah. So you don't have to store them in the box like that, which is really nice. Yeah. They could have done like really big miniatures, but it would have added so much money to it. Mm -hmm. And if they had done little tiny miniatures, it would have been like, ah, but these are huge. I like the cardboard stands. Yeah. I don't know. It they're just color. Seems they're big. To go with the theme of the game. Yeah. Because you're, you're playing huge monsters. Yeah. I don't know if miniatures would have... Mm. Yeah, it would have made an impact on the board, but I mean, it's that kind of... You would have to have big miniatures. It's like, yeah. And Otherwise, it's like yeah. That movie monster yeah. kind of, I, I think it goes well with the theme. Exactly. And also you get these nice big chunky dice, because who doesn't like to roll nice big chunky dice? Yes, big chunky dice are awesome. Yep, yeah. and the cubes are cool. They're mm -hmm. little, and I really, they have dials on here, and sometimes when you have dials in a game, they're either way too tight or way too loose. Mm, yeah. And these are just right. I sound like a little red riding hood. <laughs> but, it's true, but, but it's, yeah, they don't slip and slide, and they're not too tight that they get all... Yeah. Um, Bound or stuck. Or, yeah. Yeah. Dinged up. And we consistently play the same characters. Like, I'm almost always Pumpkin Jack. You are always, always the, the Cyber bunny, Bunny. Because it's pink. So we've used these particular ones the most, mm -hmm. and they do stay, like, they're still good. Yep. Yeah, there's no problem with them at all. So, good quality components. And the cards are good, too. They're not yep. dinging or chipping or anything. No, so. rounded edges. Yep. Good quality cards. Yeah, everything, the quality is really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you feel about the strategery? The strategery. This is, this is interesting because your strategy in King of Tokyo is going to change drastically with the number of players. Yes. With a two-player game, the way you're going to win is by getting points because there's a lot of ways to get easy points. Especially just by staying in Tokyo, because with two players, it doesn't really matter if you're in Tokyo or out of Tokyo. You're still just doing damage against each other back and forth. Right. So if you can go into Tokyo and stay, you're going to get extra points every round, except you can't heal. Right. So there's there's that. That's going to change drastically. As soon as you have more players, staying in Tokyo is a lot more difficult. So your strategy is going to be to kill everybody mm -hmm. instead of win by points. Right. So that strategy changes depending on the number of players. Um, other than that, it's mostly tactics and there's a whole lot of randomness. Right. Because the cards are random. Um, what you roll in the, the dice. dice is random. Yeah. Um, but it's nice because it's got that three re-roll Yahtzee kind of mechanic. Yeah. So there's a little bit of strategy in playing the odds. What you think? Yep. Yeah. Um, and that would be that would be very tactical. Mm -hmm. Like, what is what is the best thing that I could do right now? Like, am I out of Tokyo? Or do I need health? Should I just be attacking people to get them out of Tokyo before they win? And then of course you make that first roll and you roll three hearts. And you're like, well, I was going for attacks, but now I can evolve if you got the expansion, and get some health back. Right. So. And then sometimes, again, with that Yahtzee mechanic, you can be like, well, I'm going to save these dice. And then roll and be like, okay, no, I'm not going to save these dice and swap them out. Because it all depends on what you get. So very tactical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mostly tactics and a little bit of randomness. Right. Well, a lot of randomness, really. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a nice blend. It's a nice, quick, easy, fast game to play mm -hmm. um, when it comes to that. So that, that also helps. It's a good party game, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, what about the complexity of King of Tokyo. It's not overly complex. No. 
Um, the only thing is to, when you're explaining it, explaining all the size of the dice, mm -hmm. which isn't a big deal, but the points are a little wonky because yeah. if you want one point, you have to roll three ones. Yeah. But if you roll four ones, you get your one point plus the extra point for your other one. Yeah. So. And if you roll three twos, you get two points, but you roll an extra two, you'll get one extra point. Three threes gives you three points, and if you roll an extra three, it's one extra point. Right. Yeah. So. so that's a little, but I mean, once you explain it, show it, they should catch on. Yeah. Um, and then the how you get into Tokyo sometimes. Yes. Takes a little explaining to newer players that aren't really, um, if they're not into games, it yeah. can take a little bit. Because the only way to used. get into Tokyo is by attacking. Right. And then the only way to get out of Tokyo is to be attacked and choose to give up your spot. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I do like the fact that you can't attack specific players. Right. That would be a really big, like, especially playing with younger um, Yeah, you can't players. gang up on someone. Yeah, that would happen a lot. Whereas mm -hmm. this, who you attack depends on where you are. So you can't get upset about someone attacking you. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But all in all, uh, I don't think it's overly difficult. It's not hard to teach. Everything's yeah. pretty straightforward. Yep. It's just those two little things, um, if they're not gamers. Yeah. It would take a little explaining, and then you're ready to go. Yep. Um, the evolution cards add a little bit of complexity. Right. But yeah, I like the evolution cards because it changes it up a little bit. Yeah. It makes it a little bit more different each time. Yeah, and... And you can be tempted to like, oh, am I really going to waste all my dice on gaining health and then just get attacked by a bunch of people again type thing. But now you can still gain that health but get an extra power. Mm -hmm. And I, the thing that I really love about the evolution cards is they're specific to the character. So yeah. your character gets powers unique to that character, which is amazing. And you shuffle them each time. And you have, let's see here, you have eight in your deck. Yeah. So it's so the chances you're going to get random different ones each time you play if you play with the same character. Yeah. And the evolution cards are from the Power Up expansion. Mhm. Mm and the Halloween one has costumes. So that's another thing that it comes out in this um, deck here. Yeah. Which is nice because that kind of changes the game. You get special abilities from those. Yep. And you're able to steal them too. So you just gotta remember fun. how to steal them because sometimes I forget. Right. You have to hit them for three damage minimum. And then pay the energy. To the player. Yeah. yeah. So there are levels of complexity based off of how many expansions you throw in there. But even right. with everything thrown in. It's not overly complex. No, not for gamers. No. And for new gamers, you start off with the base game and work your way up. Yeah. And the games are quick. So. Right. Yeah. Escalating so, complexity. So, yeah. <laughs> and the next one's playability. Playability. Um, this is a great gateway game to get for non-gamers to get into gaming the theme draws a lot of people in especially if you get people that are like video gamers and and you know want that feeling of being a massive big monster beating up on other big monsters mm -hmm. they love it um i brought king of tokyo to my game club at the school and when i brought the monsters out and started to explain the game that one kid's like this is the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> which was hilarious um but at the same time the fact that you can't all gang up on one person, the rules say where your attacks go is great. Because like, they love that take that aspect, but they can get upset when it seems like people are ganging up on them. Right. Um, the only downside, I guess, would be player elimination. Mm -hmm. um, when you're playing with more and more players, that player count's going to change. Instead of getting 20 points, it's definitely going to be last man standing. Right. Because the damage can go out uh, really quickly. So that player elimination is a bit of a is a bit of a bummer because if you get out early, due to bad decisions, you gotta sit around and wait for everyone else to finish. Right. Yeah. Uh, the replayability is awesome. Um, play with different characters, the different evolution decks, the different levels of complexity. You can keep playing over and over again. Yeah, and the stack of cards is really thick. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of these that you can go through. Yep. Definitely. And then of course with the luck of the dice. It's yeah. going to change it every time. Yep. And the mechanisms of King of Tokyo are really easy and straightforward, which is another reason why it's a good gateway game. And they also match the theme 
really, really well. Mm -hmm. You do feel like a giant monster beating up on other giant monsters, you know, to Big King of the Hill. Right. Or Tokyo. Or the Queen of the Hill. <laughs> there you go. So, um, does it have the awesomeness or the cuteness? I would have to say this game is more awesome than cute. Yes, it is. It is awesome. It's awesome, yeah. I mean, the art's nice, but it's not cutesy art. It's no. that movie monster art, which yeah. is cool and yeah. awesome. It, it, it is in a very, like, kind of cartoony way, though. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's not gory or anything like that. Oh, no. No, very age-appropriate. But appropriate. it's, like, that kind of campy. Yeah. 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 If you're into, like, anime or manga or anything like that, you'll get right into it. Really? Yeah. I guess I don't know that stuff, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, would you rate this as a poor, good, excellent, or outstanding game? I would have to say this is an excellent party gateway game. Yes, I would agree. Excellent for that situation. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like a gamer's game, I, f I find it a little bit too random. I don't think you can rate it that way, though, because yeah. it really isn't. I don't think it's aimed towards that demographic. Yeah. It is for a large group of uh, party gamers who aren't really maybe new to game, like gateway gaming. Right. Yeah. And they just want something light and fun. Yeah. A absolutely. Yeah. Then it's an excellent game for that situation. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm hmm So, do we finish as Sweethearts or Rivals? I finished the game as <gasps> rivals. rivals! Hey! I won. You didn't kill me, though. <laughs> oh, true. I won by points. That's right. I survived. Oh, spoiler. Sorry. I slunk away. Oh, boohoo. You're on fire, though. I can see you all the way, like, ten blocks away. It's true. I still threw a pumpkin head at you, though. Missed. I don't know. I cracked the dome there. No, you didn't. No? No. It's not cracked? No. I guess that's not cracked. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is very... It, it, the whole game is, like, straight up attacking each other, being king of the hill, doing as much damage to everyone as possible. So it is a very rivalry game. And fun superpowers. Yeah. 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 And part of its uniqueness is you're playing a take that game where you can't gang up on people. Right. Which is really which cool. Which is cool. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, bad side of that is the player elimination, which I, I'm not a fan of that in games getting knocked out and then having to just kind of sit there and watch. Yeah, it's not so bad in a three or four player game, but when yeah. you've got six. Yeah. Yeah. That can be a, that can take a while. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing too, like I wouldn't recommend, even though if you have all the expansions and you have a whole bunch of characters, I wouldn't recommend like a big old 10 party game or 10 player party game mm. because it takes so long to get around to that player's turn. Like you could eliminate them in one round. Yeah. And even with all the expansions, um, officially, it still just stays a two to six player game. Right. Yeah. But when you have a whole bunch of pe people over and you've got all these extra cardboard players, you're yeah. really tempted. But yep. Yeah. But yeah, the more players, the more difficult for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, that is King of Tokyo. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Later.